some actually stop. or non-qualities affect the way one perceives oneself and life. And if one clears them up, um, then you have the luminosity of enlightenment or the luminosity of your innate goodness. Well, what it is, is everybody's born and has to work out greed, lust, anger, pride, and ignorance. Yeah. But when you're little and you wake up <laughs> and, you, and you hear the birds sing and see a shaft of sunlight come in, and without thinking, there's just natural happiness. You know, if you can wake up to that fresh morning. Every day. Exactly. Yeah. Well, exactly. <laughs> and I believe you, you know, and so that is your innate Buddha nature. That's, that's the palpable reality of it. And then it gets clouded over by, you know, being informed and having these other qualities that are part of the planet. They're part of, the, part of being human. And so there's the opportunity to have life like a school mm -hmm. in which your experiences go, oh, this is aggression in me. I will use that energy instead to, instead of aggression out here, I will use it to transform my energy. I'll just turn the channel of my focus, developing the capacity to bring forward that innate goodness and beneficence yeah. toward loving kindness and compassion, equanimity, and sympathetic joy. Deities, this is Chen Rei Zi, who vowed to be with humanity until all beings became enlightened. This is Tara who's like the Holy Mother in a form where she's the helpmate, and there are many forms of Tara. This is Green Tara, um, who's a protectress. And both these deities are the most prayed to in Tibet. And um, this is Medicine Buddha, which really is a quality of all our... It's like archetypes. In, in the West, we have archetypes. We have that Jungian language of archetypes. In Tibet, there's stories where People needed to cross rivers, and you know they were in dire circumstances, and there's no way to cross. And rivers in Tibet are huge; they're not little trickles, you know. They're, they're the, the, the source waters of the world, really. And uh, you know, a bridge would appear. There's four major lineages in Tibetan Buddhism, and um, the Kagyu lineage um, came down from Marpa. But before Marpa, on this wall here, we have Padmasambhava who was in the 8th century, in Tilopa and Naropa. And uh, Padmasambhava um, established Buddhism in Tibet. And um, Tilopa and Naropa were Indian Maha cities in the 8th century, 9th century, maybe? No, they were in the 11th century because Marpa came down. So, Eleven, right the end of the 11th century. So like mandalas are forms that represent uh, you can look at a mandala and it helps you journey to your, to the depths of your mind and 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 straighten things out. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, a mandala, this this whole samya is, is laid out you know, with different temples. In samya it. is a monastery. Yeah, and um, well, the area sam in that's where Padmasambhava did all that and there are all these Seven. temples, yeah. and that was in the eighth century, oh. and. Um, there's a story that the, the Tibetan king had asked Padmasambhava to come to Tibet and bring Buddhism to help tame the warring, warring mm. tribes and everything. And um, so when Padmasambhava came from India, the Tibetan king treats and says, well, I should not have to bow. I'm a great king to a Mahasiddha, to a great yogi practitioner. So he didn't bow, and his clothes burst on fire, and he rolled on the ground and said to Padmasambhava, I'm so sorry, what can I do to uh, amend my hubris? Yes. And King Detson, uh, Padmasambhava said, well, build a stupa. This is a stupa right here. And to this day, you can still see the stupa that he built mm -hmm. to amend his hubris. So then uh, Marpa 
in the 11th century, and he, he went on foot across the Himalayas, you know, and these are 17,000 foot peaks. You still can see them. No, I'm okay, still. Um, and, um, <coughs> Thank you. And um, went into India to find, or Naropa had been the head of a major university in India at the time, uh, at that time, and th this university called Nalanda, there was a hin the Hindu traditions and the Buddhist traditions, and they'd have these major debates every year, and whoever won the debate in that s section um, managed the, the university. And one year, um, Naropa, being a very fine, totally scholarly academic guy, was sitting under a tree doing his studies, and this old hag of a woman came up to him and said, you think you know something? You don't know anything. <laughs> and he's thinking, uh oh. <laughs> and she said, you want to know something? Go find my brother Talopa. He'll tell you something. Mm -hmm. and, and against all the wishes, I mean, these are real stories, you know, of the community. You know, he leaves his position and goes through the wilderness and spends years looking for this man and goes through many, many hardships. And I always tell this to the kids who come here. And he's on the verge of committing suicide because he'd gone through, you know, he'd been beaten up in villages, he'd been, you know, all kinds of hardships. And finally, when he's at the point of committing suicide because nothing else matters to him and he can't find this teacher to give him teachings, Tilopa reveals himself to him mm -hmm. and gives him the major transmissions of um, Buddhism. And, but transmits it, which is mm -hmm. different, you know, so it goes into the heart and mind and you get it. Mm -hmm. So Marpa went over the, the um, Himalayas four times to study with Naropa, and he's called Marpa the translator because he brought the Sanskrit tri uh, teachings back mm -hmm. and translated them into Tibetan. Mm -hmm. going, going from uh, the middle of Tibet down to the plains of the Ganges is a little bit like walking to Mexico City. Yeah, from here. And also going from a height of 12, 14, 16, 17,000 feet down to sea level. And, um, we could get Russia to go, or oh, China, so, I mean, to the, absorb just some from, of this. Yeah, really, really. <clears throat> well, there are uh, still some sacred places in China where they actually aren't touched. And to this day, in, outside of Samia, there's a mountain of caves that are about, about 17, 18,000 feet. And there are many yogis living oh. in those caves.